Hi guys, it's CJ from Yugatech, and today we're going to address 5G connectivity in smartphones in 2024. Surely, most devices offer the bare minimum with 4G, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth. Things like IR blasters are uncommon in the mid range segment and often come with higher tier devices. But what about 5G? 5G enabled smartphones help users stay connected on the go. Suffice it to say, we believe that this should be part of the bare minimum that a smartphone provides. So today, we're gonna cover the Smart ZTE Blade A75 5G. It's one of the, if not, the most affordable 5G smartphone in the market this year, so far. Amid the sea of entry-level devices that have 4G, this device makes a compelling case to stand out with its price alone. Then again, how good is it? If you're curious to see for yourself, let's dive right in. At the first glance, most people would probably recognize the phone's camera module. It's certainly sizable and is definitely one of its most striking features. We also found that the ZTE Blade A75 comes with a plastic frame and glossy back panel. It's a bit reflective but also telling that the phone is prone to smudges. However, it does come with a transparent rubber case out of the box to address this. Otherwise, it feels pretty light at 204 grams. While it's pretty thin, feels too long for it to slip into pockets. For I.O., the volume rocker and power button can be found on the right side. The power button doubles as a fingerprint sensor as well, but we'll get to that later. Left side, you find the SIM card tray. On the bottom, you can find a USB Type-C port and a 3.5mm audio port beside it. Overall, the build makes the phone feel as if it's not under the entry-level segment. Kudos to ZTE! I should mention that this device does not come with any protection certification or IP rating. In other words, you might want to be careful with drops and the like. Moving on, the ZTE Blade A75 sports an IPS LCD screen with a refresh rate of 120Hz. It only has HD Plus resolution, so admittedly, our expectations were leveled. It was a pleasant surprise that the phone produced vivid colors making for a decent viewing experience. If we did have to nitpick with, it's how the resolution is set to 40p for the most part. YouTube does that automatically, but the contrast between its maximum video output to 480p is insanely noticeable. Additionally, the bezels might come off as thick for some. While it isn't totally an issue, some users might find some gripes with it. For audio, the device has a mono loudspeaker. It took us a while to find it, but we found it embedded on top of the screen. I have to say, it's quite an uncommon place for a speaker to be. I mean, it's where most users expect to hear calls from. The thing is, it's not just used for that purpose, which feels weird. Anyway, the audio quality itself wasn't really the best. It's a bit too boxed in and muffled. I'd say ZTE needs to do some polishing for this, even with DPS audio. Luckily enough, it does have a 3.5mm audio port and Bluetooth for wireless earbuds. On to biometrics, users will get a side-mounted fingerprint sensor on the button along with the face unlock. The face unlock works fairly quickly to respond. As for the fingerprint sensor, it takes some getting used to. I mean, it does get the job done, but during my first few times, it had like a 70-30 success rate. For optics, the phone sports a 50 megapixel main camera paired with a bokeh depth sensor on the rear. The dual rear cameras can shoot up to 4K at 30 FPS. It also has an 8 megapixel shooter at the front for selfies. We found that the phone can excel in color reproduction in well lit environments. The front camera, on the other hand, feels a bit desaturated for my taste. Still, I have to tip my hat to ZTE for how well skin tones come out after post processing. As someone who pursues toy photography, I'm quite particular with capturing details on my figurines. From afar, the shots look decent, but when zoomed in, the camera's not as capable of capturing details with accuracy. Lastly, the camera struggles with the absence of light. Even the slightest movement can ruin your shots, so keep this in mind during nighttime. The phone runs on MyOS 13 based on Android 13 out of the box. Despite its outdated operating system, we have to say the UI still feels clean. Or well, cleaner. We say this because the phone has a ton of bloatware. While it's not an issue for some, it's quite annoying to have to uninstall these. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, it's your usual Android makeup but one feature I want to highlight is its screen edge mistouch prevention. This lessens the instance where the screen might be pressed by accident. 
It's handy for users who forget to lock their screen and get the device from their pocket. Powering this device is a Unisoc T760 chipset, which includes an ARM Mali J57 MC4 GPU. Our unit comes with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of UFS 3.1 storage. Users may tinker with the settings to get an additional 4GB of RAM through virtual memory extension. So, how does it fare with games? Okay, so the phone heats up just minutes into running a game. You can feel the heat near the camera island and it can possibly get too hot to touch if you're in a prolonged gaming session. I also have to mention that this phone isn't compatible with Zenless Zone Zero. So keep that in mind if you want to try out relatively new games with this phone. Sorry, proxies. However, users can still play other titles like Wuthering Waves, Honkai Star Rail, Genshin Impact, and Pokemon Unite. From experience, they're only playable with the lowest settings enabled. Even increasing the numbers by just a bit will cause it to lag. If you're a true gamer and don't mind playing under these conditions, respect. I'm not stopping anyone from trying, but it doesn't feel optimal. If users want to take my recommendations on it, just stick to light gaming sessions with this device. We'll leave our synthetic benchmark scores for the ZTE Blade A75 for those interested. The Smart ZTE Blade A75 5G packs a 5000 mAh battery with support for 10 watt of wired charging through USB Type-C. The phone was able to last an entire day with usual activities. This includes watching videos on YouTube, social media scrolling, photography, and a handful of matches in Pokemon Unite. For those interested in running the numbers, the phone managed to give us 13 hours and 26 minutes of activity on PC Mark's battery test. In our video loop test, it provided us with 16 hours and 40 minutes of media playback. In terms of charging speed, it took almost 3 hours to charge this from 20 to full. Personally, this feels really slow, but without fast charging support, I can understand why it took a bit of time. On to connectivity, the phone features 5G, dual nano SIM, Bluetooth 5, Wi-Fi 5, and GPS. From experience, it's quite capable of connecting to Smite's data services in an instant. It provided me with a great connection even in an area with a weak signal. In terms of call quality, it did pretty well. However, with how the speaker works, I caution people to find a closed-off space when taking calls. Again, the audio feels muffled. I don't think the connection is ever going to be the problem when taking calls with the device, but the speaker is questionable. Well, that wraps up our review of the Smite ZTE Blade A75. We didn't miss anything, did we? The price, man, the price! Oh, I'm, um... At the start of the video, we told you guys that this phone is one of, if not, the most affordable 5G smartphone around right now. The Smart ZTE Blade A75 5G retails for 5,450 pesos in its single colorway of diamond black. It's a great choice if you're looking for a great budget-friendly 5G smartphone. It has what you need to do for the day-to-day -day from social media scrolling, browsing, and on-the-go use. What you really don't advise it for is gaming sessions. You're good for about 4-5 to five games, which is still a good number. Side note, users can also get the device via smart postpaid plans. This comes with only 5G calls and texts, and 20 gigabytes of open access data. Feel free to look up the deals for those interested. But hey, what do you guys think of the Smite ZTE Blade A75 5G? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you found this helpful, do us a favor and hit that like button and notification bell to get updates on more of our videos. Don't forget to follow us on our socials at Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok, and visit us on our website at yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. Again, this has been CJ, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye! See you later!